This has been an ACB community call. Today's Unmute Presents Community Call was hosted on Tuesday, 26 September, 2023. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Unmute. As usual, we want to make sure everyone knows we're going to go through first hands first and make sure we get everyone's first questions answered. After that, if we have enough time, we'll definitely take second questions. Also, please be respectful and let everyone Get the same respect as you would want for getting your questions answered. And today we got first Michael Deutsch with us, and he actually is going to ask the question of the day. So Michael D, how's it going? Doing great, Marty. Uh, So the question of the day is we're about to start seeing the rollout of the new Windows version uh, 23H2. It's kind of a mouthful. And that's going to bring all kinds of new features down the, the pipe. So are you going to update and what are you excited about, especially the new co-pilot, you know, AI features and all those things? So will you be updating and what will you be using? Thanks, Michael D. And as always, we also have Michael Babcock with us. How's it going, Michael? It is going well. I recommend that Michael checks his audio hijack session because it looks like that went to dead air. Uh, Never mind. Disregard that. It was an issue on my end. Uh, So I wanted to give a quick overview of the content that we had published here uh, over the last week. And we have uh, shared technically working gravity of the forms is the name of that episode where Demasi and I sit down, talk about a couple of things. If you are a blind or sight impaired individual using gravity forms, you definitely want to listen to that because, uh, someone Taylor, uh, made a great innovation and now I can independently reliably and consistently reorganize form fields. Uh, as Demasi pointed out in the episode, I, I, you could using a screen reader. It just wasn't the most reliable or uh, or, or easy to do. Um, on Sunday, we published an, epi- an episode for Unmute Presents called uh, the OCO app. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's OKO app. And that is a quick interview that I had with Mikel at the ACB conference and convention, where he talks about how the OCO app uses the back-facing camera on the iPhone with artificial intelligence so individuals can know what the, what the crosswalk sign is showing. Full transparency, I have recently accepted some uh, an opportunity with the team there, so they do pay me a little bit of money. Um, on Friday finds the... Exploring Social Media and AI Challenges episode was published by Lynn. If you haven't heard Lynn's Friday Finds since she dropped that, I definitely checked those out because she's she's doing a great job over there at Friday Finds. And you can subscribe to just that episode if that's the only thing you want to get. On Thursday, we sat down and chatted with Katie over at Katie Talks Travel. And Katie goes over the different cruise lines and uh, the uh, differences in those cruises. So if you had any questions about what's Royal Caribbean versus Princess, et cetera, et cetera, uh, you'll want to give that a listen. I cast Michael and a couple of people sat down and shared some challenges that were faced while attempting to put in a pre-order for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Um, That is a brief overview of the episodes that we've published, Marty, and I'll hand it back over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Michael. Also, I want to remind everyone, Games to Play with Lady A is immediately following this call. If you want to go check that out, it's always a good one. And if you have tech questions, go ahead and raise your hands. And Sheila, let's get rolling. All right. Diane. Hey, Diane, how's it going? Not even going to tell her how to unmute because she knows. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to Taylor. We'll come back to Diane. Hey, Taylor. Hey, Taylor. Mm. Oh, no. Is Zoom it's, having issues? No, Is Zoom know. broken? I hope not because I was able to. Um... Hey, I'm, I'm muted testing. There you are. Two. There you go. We can Sorry hear you about now. that. I had no a whole problem. bunch of widgets pop up on my screen. Um, so. Hey, y'all. Uh, so I am actually upgrading to the new Windows. I'm very excited about the Copilot features, and I cannot wait for it to drop, and I'm going to install it immediately. 
Can you let people know what Copilot is? Yes. So Copilot is basically what I understand to be, and I've never tried it. So just hold on a second. It is an AI assistant for your Windows PC. So for example, our friend Jeff Bishop asked the AI yesterday, who is Taylor Arndt? And it came up with, Taylor is a blind YouTuber who produces content on web development and is an accessibility enthusiast or something. So um, it is a very awesome assistant, and I can't wait to try to see if I can do some coding through there. That's awesome. Uh, I'll go to the next hand here in a second with uh, Sheila. But one thing that I learned while doing some research, and you may be wondering, well, that's cool. You can look up who is someone, but you can also get information about what's on your computers, including if you need to look up travel information, you can say, find me all the details about my trip to Jacksonville. And awesome. uh, it will pull all those details in order for you to get those. So thank you, Taylor. I, I Appreciate can't it. wait. Thank you. Who do we got next, Sheila? Diane? Hey, Diane. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Something was different about my mute button. It, it said something about tap to speak. Um, ah. So I don't know what the deal is with that. But anyway, um, I have a question about Dropbox. Um, on Saturday, I... Uh, I hosted a chapter meeting on Zoom, and I had to leave the meeting early, so I turned the hosting over to someone else. And so um, I had it set to record locally, so it's, it um, saved the recording on her computer. And I'm trying to find out how to get a link from her to that recording so that I can listen to it. Um, she tried to share it with me, but, you know, the link isn't working, whatever she's doing to to share the file. And uh, on my computer, I if, when I go into my, well, when she goes into her applications menu, she says she gets a ribbon. And I, I have never in my life seen a ribbon when I've pressed my applications key. So I don't know if she has her computer set up differently than most people or what. Um, and... Um, she, um, when I, when I, when I share a drop, when I want to send a Dropbox link on my file, I have, I have Windows 11 though, and she has 10. So, um, when I go into my applications menu, I have, uh, something that says view in Dropbox, I think is what it says, view in Dropbox sub menu. And in that sub menu, I can copy a link, you know, and share it in an email or something. So I don't know. I'm trying to get this recording from her and I don't know how to go about getting it. Well, you can share the file directly or I should say she can do one of a couple things. One is she can put it in her Dropbox in a folder and she can share that folder with you. And then once you... Yeah, that, that, she seems to be having trouble doing that. I don't know. Maybe um, she can try uh, sharing just the file with you, not the folder. So if she put it anywhere in her Dropbox and then she just shared the individual file maybe that would be an easier solution for you so then all is, you're doing is downloading the individual file is there any tips you can give me to give her on how to share well once you have the uh, whatever file that you want you uh want to make sure that you <clears throat> excuse me have it all the way uploaded into dropbox and once you have that then you can go to it and do like a right click and share and then share with you and it'll give you some options over email or whatever way you want to share it i think that if you just share the single file instead of trying to share a folder it might be a little bit easier and also make sure that it's in a form you know like mp3 form if it's just audio so that your computer is able to read it. So it's not in some funky file format that you're going to have a hard time reading or maybe your computer won't read it. So I that's... think, yeah, I think that um, Zoom, I think, I thought Zoom put stuff in M4A, but, you know, I and I should well, this be is, If to... this is on your Mac and you download an M4A, you shouldn't have an issue. No, it's on my, it's on my Windows computer. And I, 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 what I do with the, what I would probably do with it is open it in my audio editor. You know, I have Audacity, and I know that Audacity will open those kind of files, but I have to get it first. So, all right, I will call her again. Try and, doing the know, single file. Have her just share the single file, not a folder, with you, and see if you're able to get it that way. 
Okay. All right. Thank you. No problem. Good luck. Yeah. All right. Sharon. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. How are you? Hello. Um, I have a question and a comment. Uh, My question is, um, on Overcast, I have not been able to find Friday Finds. Um, I've gotten IACast, and I've had Unmute Presents. I put it under... Go ahead. I was going to say what might help you is search Friday Finds with Lynn, and it should come up. Friday Finds with Lynn? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll try that. Try that and see if that comes up for you. Okay. Um, And the other... The other thing is I just um, got the um, 2017, you know, iOS 17.1 or whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. And um, I noticed that when I have my phone locked and a new notification comes in, it used to just say one new notification. And now it says um, where it's from, like CNN or whatever. And I don't, I'm not sure if I like that. And I don't know if there's any way to take that out. (laughs) <laughs> there it is. You can go. Well, do you know which app is uh, displaying that data? Probably All of them the news seems app, to be. Right? I'm sorry. Do you know which app on your phone is displaying that? Is it like the news app? What do you mean, which app? There's a news app on your phone. And oh, yeah. You can turn those things off in all the different apps. It's called Live Updates. So if you turn that off, it'll remove it from the home screen. It'll stop giving you live updates. No, I want to know that I have a notification. I just then, don't want to hear the description <laughs> on oh, the yeah. lock screen. Yeah. So you're not. So just for a clarification, you're uh, you're 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 getting notifications, but it's not describing them. Can you do you know? Can you tell me what it's saying? No, well, when I unlock the screen, I can read the whole notification. You know about this particular piece of news. What I used to hear on the lock screen was just mm-hmm. new notification. End of story. Now I'm hearing notification from CNN or WCRB mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, and I, maybe that's just something that the phone is doing now, you know? It, it might be. There's so many ways to customize your notifications, like with voiceover. There's um, there's ways you can configure if it will read notifications on the lock screen or read notifications when they come in. So there's there are a lot of new settings in 17 and 17.0.1. Uh, to to change the verbosity of those things. Okay, maybe I'll have to give Apple a call and just go through them. Um, all right. Thank if you, you very go into much, your settings try. and notifications, there's stuff there as well. But the apps and the operating system has updated a bit to give what you see on the home screen more information. Okay. Oh, is that right? Okay, it may yeah. just be as it is. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. Have a good day. Yep. Okay. You too. Bye. Good luck. All right, 501 ending in 266. You can unmute and tell us who you are, please. My name is Susan. I'm from Arkansas. Hey, Susan. Uh, Hi. Hey, I am calling in. I hope someone on the line can help me. But I have the blind shell phone. And um, it was like if I sent a text message to somebody, it was notifying me that it had been delivered. That stopped. I don't know why it stopped. I still get the ones, you know, if someone sends me a message, I'm getting them just fine. So if I'm understanding so correctly, know. you're um, sending a text message and you're not getting a notification of the text message actually being delivered to the person, but you used to. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So um, it was are- doing it, but. Okay, go ahead. I was just going to say, there are a couple of options, and I'm taking a look. So if you go into Messages, so you go down to Messages, okay, and then you press OK, Mm -hmm. and then you go up to what says Messaging Settings, and you press OK, there's an option that says Message Delivery Notification. Mine is set to where it says Do Not Notify About Message Delivery selected you want to make sure that yours says notify about message delivery selected so in recap go down to message okay go up to message settings press okay and then make sure that delivery is on did you say you did that yes okay then i then i don't have an answer for you because that's the only setting i'm aware of (laughs) unless the information is no longer being provided by your carrier what carrier are you using 
you're using AT&T. So what I would do is uh, call Diane and make sure that your AT&T phone is configured to the best that she knows of. Because AT&T isn't a officially supported carrier, it could be an issue with the networking. You're just not getting that information. Um, if you have her number, it's the 833-972-2020 number. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. No worries. And thanks for bringing your question on. Hopefully you'll get to the bottom of that because I know how uh, assuring it is to know if your message was delivered. Sheila, who do we got next? Uh, Rachel. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Rachel. How's it going? You're muted, Rachel. I uh, should be unmuted now. You are. Mm-hmm. Yep. We can hear you. Um, I have a question. Um, you had mentioned a website for, it wasn't Netflix, it was another website, and it was for descriptive movies, I believe. You said you, they could be, you could download them to your files for MP3s. You said it was descriptive movies and television shows. Can you review what that is, please? Oh, yeah, that's um, Sheila. What, what was that called? Audio Vault. Audio, Audio Vault. Vault. There we go. That's what it is. It's called Audio Vault. And it's audiovault.com, I believe. Net. Net. Audiovault.com. And they no, don't net, charge net, you, correct? net. N-E-T. Audiovault.net. Audiovault.net? Correct. Yes. Okay. And there's no charge for any of that? Nope. You no. just need to create an account and then you can browse through the material that's available out there. Okay. Thank you very much. No worries. Yep. Good luck to you. Thank you. Of course, they do accept donations. Of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Beth. Beth, you're still muted. All right. We'll go to Jeff. We'll hey, come Jeff. back to Beth. Hey, there I, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Beth. Um, yeah, I was um, going to ask then about the um, podcast. Um, um, I can't find your episodes. Um, I can only find the Katie's episode and the travel. Like, I want, like, I want to listen to some episodes back, like when we they talked about script talk and um, script talk and and uh, just other things that you we've talked about. Got and, you, Beth. So, what podcast app are you using? Are you doing this on the I'm, Victor or on your phone? I'm using that uh, the Apple. Hey, Michael D. How do you see archives of podcasts in the Apple Podcast app? Because that's <laughs> an app I don't use. So what you can do if you're in the Apple Podcasts app, if you follow the Unmute Presents feed in your Apple Podcasts app, there is a, I believe it's called Shows. I'm going to go verify that real quick. Face ID would unlock my phone. So there is a library tab. That's the one. And then uh, you'll want to go uh, to Shows. Mm-hmm. And and then you'll find... Uh, you're, you'll find Unmute Presents if you're following the podcast. And then you could go into there. And then once you've gone into there, you could find the individual episode you like and you could play it from there. Oh, so, okay. So you open the podcast app, tap on library, tap on shows, find the Unmute Present show. And then for Script Talk, you'll have to scroll way back because I think that was back in January. So you'll you'll scroll the list quite a bit ways back to find the episode you're looking for, and then you can play it. The reason oh. you're seeing Katie is because that was probably the last time you checked the most recent episode that was up there. So thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. And and yeah, about the audio vaults, is there, I bet there's more shows there that are described in system access because they have quite a few shows too. Yeah. There's tons of shows, uh, movies and TV shows on there. You can search for stuff. Um, it's got a ton of stuff on there and the shows go way back, like years and years back. So think about the best suggestion I would have is think about what shows you like to watch or what movies you like to watch and search them up that way. Cause otherwise there's so much content. You're going to probably just be swimming in the ocean (laughs) of content. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then if I have a show I like, but it's not described, is there a way I can maybe ask to, have it described or not? You'll have to check the website just... out to find out those details. I don't have that information, but go check out audiovault.net. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, yep. Beth. Good luck. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Hey, Jeff. Okay. Hey, Jeff. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. Um, going through. Oh, yes. I'm going to update Windows 11 for sure. I'm really looking forward to Copilot. Um, I'm trying. I'm going through old photos on an iPhone 
and um, using Be My AI. Is there a faster way to get to it? Because you gotta. It seems like, <clears throat> pardon me. The way I'm doing it is sharing the photo, and then kind of um, uh, what's the term? Touch finding. Like I'm um, trying to find the actions. You know, past the mm-hmm. things on the share sheet. And then I have to, you know, swipe down or several times. Is there a maybe a more efficient way to get those photos to uh, the Be My AI action? So the only thing you could do to speed that up a little bit, unless Michael or Marty is aware of something, because I believe you still have to go into the image, hit share, and then locate that describe by describe with Be My AI button. The only thing I can suggest doing is I believe you can reorganize those to bring the Be My AI closer to the top of your actions list. Um, but unfortunately, yes, you have to go through the share and then go to Be My AI. All right. I thought it was worth asking. Thank you very much, I, Michael. I believe you can also turn off certain actions that you do not want. Yes. I okay. believe that's Yeah, they get rid of a bunch of, mm-hmm. to me, useless actions. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. Another thing, I don't know... If be my eyes has a shortcut action, they do then you not. could create a. Sh- they do not. That's a. Shame they do not. Not as of yet. <laughs> that would make it so easy. Yes, um, sir. It would because that would <laughs> that would be magic. <laughs> yeah, that would. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. How about no we submit feedback because it is still they they're always open to feedback. So submit feedback and ask if they can add a shortcut action. So then you what you could do is trigger a shortcut to describe images. And then you I wonder if you could send bulk images into it. That would be kind of cool. Anyways. That would be cool. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Brad, do we have somebody in Clubhouse? Yes, we have Mark joining us from Canada. Mark, Hello, go Mark. ahead. Hey Mark. Hey, How Brad. Are you? Hey, okay, Michael. Uh kudos for yesterday's podcast with Kelly and Ramia, by the way. Thank Very you. Interesting. Appreciate it. Very informative and uh we should give you more recognition from from that podcast. <laughs> Always look forward to it every week. Um, my question is twofold. First of all, with iMessage, uh, I really don't give a damn whether people have kept my message or what they're doing with it in iMessage. Why do we get those as, as a way of uh, not, I, I don't care if Earl's kept my message or not. That's up to him. <laughs> You know, uh, is that just something lately with iMessage that's happening? And we're not getting the the, uh, the text versions of those in iOS 17 yet, in voiceover anyway. And what's, this, what's the status with iMessage with that? Is there any way I can get rid of Earl's Echoes? Wicker has kept your messages or somebody's kept your messages? Or is that just part of the routine now? I think so what uh mark is talking about is if someone if you send an i message with your voice so you send a voice message through i messages by default that message will go away after 30 seconds um someone receiving that message has the opportunity to keep it and uh now mark's getting made aware of the fact that someone has chosen to keep that i message i don't think that is correct or i don't think there is a way to um eliminate that message michael do you know the way because i think that's just how it is what if you mute that conversation then he will he not hear it no because that'll mute all the messages yeah when someone sends a message message back no there's no way to there's no way to keep from seeing those because it's a privacy uh alert from apple um i believe it, it's basically saying that that person decided to keep your message instead of it going away. Um, like, because voice messages going away is the default behavior. So uh, you could choose to keep a message or have where all messages are kept. So that's what's going on. Uh, I do not know a way for that message to go away that, that I've seen. Um, and I believe like, one thing I wish that they would fix is I, I believe that the transcripts from voice messages uh, cannot be read with voiceovers, what I've been hearing. So uh, not, yet. Not, not yet. Not yet. Okay. One last question has to do with uh, Apple Mail. I use Gmail, but with the Apple mm-hmm. uh, email. And I have my all my notifications turned on, badges, sounds, and everything. And I've chosen my my uh, my ringtone 
uh, but I'm not getting any notifications. I've seen my new mail, but I don't see the ringtone. No. You're you a voice over I don't hear the ringtone, I should say, or the notification when the new mail comes in. And I don't get the notification. I actually have to go into mail and and, and it opens it up and it says, you have new email. I'm okay, that's fine. But how come I didn't get the notification even though everything's turned on? Is this a bug in no. iOS 17, I wonder? My mail is never, are you talking about VIPs or just regular mail? Regular. So I've never actually gotten iOS to do that in the mail app. Uh, I kind of wish that it could. Um, I've never gotten my mail to always notify me every time there's a new message. I think they do that uh, by default to save battery. Uh, but I do know that VIP emails come through your notifications. At least they do on mine. Uh, but the mail app typically for me only uh, shows new mail for me. And it's always worked like that for me. I've never gotten it to notify on every email. Okay. Okay. No problem. It's just weird because I was getting it in 16, but Earl and I have been doing the betas in 17 since June. So Some, this is just something new that's just happened in the last, uh, since 17 came out to everybody, actually. And we got the re final release candidate. Uh, it might be worth this checking. Has been an issue. Under, it might be worth checking under accessibility voiceover verbosity notifications and see yeah. if any setting there has been disabled as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much. I've for taken. Thank you for letting me take up some of your time. Much appreciated. Oh, no and all the good best luck. from Montreal. Yep. Good luck. Have a great day. Thank you. All right, Chanel. Hey, Chanel. Hello. So yes, um, my Windows 11 computer should update. That being said, I had um, disabled a lot of the things in the taskbar, including that search and. Uh, disabled the Cortana as far as possible. So I'm not sure if Copilot will still work for me or if I'll need to kind of re-put the taskbar back to its default settings to get that uh, feature or whatever, but I guess I'll find out. Um, also, as we were talking last week, I did update to iOS 17. However, I ran into trouble when I updated to 17.0.1. My Dexcom uh, just totally failed. It kept saying it was trying to reconnect. Did that for hours and hours. I tried to downgrade um, to just regular iOS 17 and then re-upgrade to 0.01. And it's still, I still had troubles. And I'm this close to a new battery for the transmitter. So I'm just going to wait for, I mean, a new transmitter. So I'm just waiting for that because I, I didn't want to call Dexcom and say, yeah, I've updated um, my, even though I'm, you're not supposed to use iOS 17 with your product, but yeah, that's, that's what happened to me. And my Braille display, which is also connects via Bluetooth kind of acts weird or the phone acts weird trying to find it. So um just make it repeatedly makes a noise as if it's searching for that display. So anyway, that's my iOS 17.0.2 bugs. And um, otherwise, though, it's a good experience. Awesome. All right. And Brad, do we, oh, I'm sorry, Chanel, were you done? Yes, I'm done. Okay. Thanks, Chanel. Thanks, Thanks Chanel. Chanel. Brad, we got somebody yes. else in Clubhouse? We do. We have, uh, it's either Tony or it's DJ masquerading as Tony. Tony. What it may be. Hey, DJ. DJ, masquerading as Tony. All right, DJ. welcome. Oh, thank you. Okay, so um, on my iPhone, and it doesn't matter what app I'm in, or even when I'm in uh, Gmail, or whether I'm typing on the phone itself or on my keyboard, while I'm in the midst of an action, the screen kind of bounces back up to the top. Like, by, and, and I know I have my screen curtain off anyway. I mean, on anyway, but it bounces back up to the top of wherever I'm at and the screen curtain on. And I'm wondering, how can I get it to stop doing that? It's been doing that lately for the past couple of weeks. And um, I don't know how to get that to stop doing that. Hmm. Like, I can be in the middle of typing a message or sending off out an email. And while I'm on my keyboard, which I love, by the way, um, it, it, it will all of a sudden just, you know, bounce out of it. And, I mean, it's still in there, but it will just announce, okay, uh, your screen curtain is up or screen curtain on or something like that. And I just have to wait uh, a second or two before I continue typing again or if I'm 
using my phone to swiping or whatever. Um, I'll you know wait a couple of seconds and then I'll tap on an area of the phone and resume back where I am. And I'm like, I, because I used to didn't have to do that. So I wonder. Yeah, DJ, I wonder if voiceover is restarting, especially when it says screen curtain on. Typically, mm-hmm. that's a that's a sign that voiceover is restarting for some reason. Um, if it consistently happens, you have two solutions. Are you on 17 or not yet? I don't think I'm on 17, although I, Tony and I were just talking about it. And um, after she was on it, and I was going to check for hers, but I'm going to check mine okay. to see if so, I'm on it. So if you are on 17, uh, I, I can't solve the problem for why it keeps jumping focus, uh, but I can give you a solution to help. And Apple's kind okay. of fixed this. Um, there is now a action in your voiceover gestures that you can go assign to a keystroke that says touch center of screen, I believe is the name of your bring focus to center of screen. When you assign this to a keystroke, then you can press that keystroke and it'll be like you're touching the middle of the screen and it should bring focus back into where it needs to be uh, because apparently that has been an option and you can set that to a Braille command as well if you need to. Now, is that in the, um, where is that? Look, is that in the rotary or is that's that under the, uh, uh, gen, That's under the, settings, accessibility, voiceover, and then uh, I believe it's called gesture. Gotcha. Okay, I'm gonna try that. See what's yeah, up. give that a try, and that should possibly help solve it for you. Um, and you. if it doesn't, let us know. All right, we'll do. And also, just a little sidebar. Thank you for your helps and your input for uh, uh, the situation at my job. Um, it's still pending, so we're still waiting on IT and uh, seeing what's happening there. So I'll give you an update. Um, yep. Let you know what's up. All right. And uh, I I lied to you a little bit, uh, DJ. I just want to be fully transparent. It's not under gestures. It's under commands in the voiceover settings. And you can tell Siri to open voiceover settings and then locate the commands option. Gotcha. Ooh, that rain's coming down real good here. All right. Well, (laughs) thanks so much. Thanks, DJ. uh, It's been a pleasure. All right. In the mix. Who do we got next, Sheila? Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Good afternoon, gentlemen. I have a golf box question for you. Uh, I have those 10 machines. I discovered a while back that when I would, um, I have several people that I share phones with, and uh, it took 40 forever in a day for them to get uh, whatever I said. Well, I got nosing around, and I discovered that Dropbox was no longer showing up in my system tray. Well, I discovered that before, but I just thought, well, it's just the way to do it, but maybe it no longer shows up or something. Well, uh, I got talking with our, our friend Herbie, and he uh, showed me how to get that back in the system tray and got it working again. However, if I restart my computer or shut my computer down and then boot back up, Dropbox is gone from the system tray, and I have to go back and, and, and get that back in there again. Uh, and so what I'm wondering is how do I keep that in there? I have gone in and uh, done uh, what I was told to do, which was to go and and, and uh, into where it says, um, I'm not going to remember exactly everything. Uh, it's, it's in... Um, uh, in in a menu there that, that when you tell it that that you want it to to start on startup, so I did that. It's checked, so I unchecked it, rechecked it. Still no soap. It's still if I restart the computer, that Dropbox is not in the system tray. I have to go into the uh, the start menu and and uh, type it in, and and sometimes it takes me a couple of three tries that it it would, it would eventually get it back. Can you tell me what's going on and how I can fix it if it can be fixed? So it makes me wonder if, and and if you, you've already done, I think one of the things I would have tried, and that is to disable that automatically start up with Dropbox feature. Uh, you yeah. didn't state if you had restarted your computer after you disabled it and then re-enabled it and restarted the computer again. Um, yeah. That might be worth trying if you haven't yet. Also, in the Control-Alt-Delete menu, which has become very cluttered in my opinion, there is a startup tab that you can choose and you may be able to add Dropbox to there as well. I'm looking up other ways to be able to get that to work because ultimately you're right. What what you have to do when it doesn't show up in your system tray is to go in and turn Dropbox back on. Otherwise, it's not going to sync for you. So 
I would try a restart between changing that setting each time, Tom. See if that fixes it. If it doesn't, check under the control alt delete and then start up uh, option. Yeah, well, like I say, I've I've tried it a couple of times. You know, I've uh, restarted it and and then it still uh, doesn't come up. So I, I go back in and and uh, type in Dropbox and 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 it, it'll after a couple of tries. Sometimes it takes me a try or two before it'll, before it'll work, and then mm-hmm. it'll, it'll back in. But then after I restart the computer again, same thing. It's gone. Do you and, have an antivirus software running by chance? Yeah, it's. I think it's Defender. Okay, if it's Defender, you shouldn't see any problems with it, because uh, yeah, it says to go into, click the Dropbox link uh, in your system tray, choose the settings, and then enable the automatically start. So if it's not starting, I wonder if there's something wrong with the Dropbox installation. Another thing you could try, because Dropbox does store everything in the cloud, Tom, is you could try to just reinstall Dropbox by downloading it from the Dropbox website and see if then the uh, start on Windows startup setting stays. You won't lose any files because your files are stored in the cloud. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking of. Probably. That's what you might tell me that uh, I have to just only install Dropbox and install it new, right? Yep, that's what I would do. Make sure that you don't make any changes in your Dropbox folder before you uninstall it because those changes may not reflect. So I would right. uh, I would uninstall it and then uh, restart your computer and then reinstall Dropbox and see if that fixes it. Okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And, thanks, uh, Tom. Thanks for, your, thanks for your time. Before we move on, I wanted to give an update on something you mentioned earlier, and that is the notifications for mail. Uh, I did some research into this, and I'm really excited because whenever I looked at this, I think it was iOS 15 or before, there I could not get notifications to come on for any emails or anything like that. Like the Gmail app will notify you on every email that comes in, and I could never get mail to do that. I just tried it, and with iCloud, it is working now for me. Uh, it has not been working whenever I tried it with a Gmail or a Workspace account. So uh, it is possible to make that work, and I'm just going to keep playing with that, and I'll, I may report back at another time. So really exciting stuff. I didn't know that worked. Thanks, Michael. All right. You ready? Yep. Let's go for it. All right. Annie. Hey, Annie. How you doing? Doing, doing okay. Thank you. For a number of years, I've been using the Kindle Fire as my, as my book, book reader. I download from Bard. And it's a small tablet. I carry it around. And now I'm having to restart it quite a bit. And so I've been looking at Voice View before I replace the Kindle Fire. And Voice View seems a lot more complicated than VoiceOver. I, I know more of VoiceOver. So I'm wondering about buying an iPad mini to replace the Kindle. However, it's a new one. It's quite expensive. And I've been looking at the older ones, and I wonder if there's any difficulty. And if not, how far back can I go to get the less expensive model? I a renewed, they say, is that a used one? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would prefer to buy a new one, but how how far back can I go on the models and still have just for a book reader? So I if I can make a recommendation, the the refurbished ones are really nice. the The iPad Mini, the latest one, is a bit more expensive, but mm-hmm. it is one of a kind. It is just such a nice form factor. I wouldn't go because they don't release many of the iPad Minis. They don't have a lot of models. I think this is like the fifth or sixth generation. I can't remember exactly. Um, but I would only go one or two back if you're if you're looking to do that just for staying up with the operating systems the yes uh you know they they don't release many of them and the current one has you know the USB C and it has the apple pencil to uh support so um you know, the, the the kindle fire tablets are great tablets they're inexpensive um but like you said the ipad's going to work just much better uh, but the the ipad mini is and i think the ipad mini is tiny it's a very small tablet so it is it is small. So, That's why I would buy it. And so I, I think probably the refurb- probably the battery is better and lasts mm-hmm. longer. The Kindle right. does well on the battery. Right. And so I would look at, you know, either the current one, if you could get it refurbished or the previous generation uh, as as the ones to go with. All right. So don't go back too far. 
Correct, because it will not get the new versions of iOS. Yeah, all I want is to read the books off of Bard. I don't need the pencil and the rest of the stuff. Yeah. But thank you. No worries. Thanks for your yep. question. I appreciate you jumping in. Who do we got next, Sheila? Abraham. Hi, Abraham. Hi. Um, so I have Windows 11. I missed what you said about Pilot, but anyway, I'll catch the recording on, on that. Um, uh, 7-Zip, for some reason, is not showing up in my context menu, um, and I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I see the show more options, and then I still click that, and 7-Zip is still not there. I in- uninstalled, reinstalled, not there. That is interesting. I'm not certain why that might be unless there's a settings in the seven zip application um, that that prevents it from showing up in your context menu. Let me ask you, Abraham, what are you using seven zip to unzip? Uh, or zip um, work files. Okay. Um, well, I meant like the file format because uh, one of the oh, newer uh, versions of Windows docs. will support unzipping RAR uh, directly. So if it was for that, oh, then okay. you would be able to just use the native tools is what I was asking. Um, I find 7 zips compression a bit better. <laughs> gotcha. So, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. If it's not showing up in the context menu, that's a little strange. And, and maybe drop their support team a question to ask them if they have any uh, suggestions for how to get it to show up because it should okay. be showing up there. And then um, another quick question. Uh, I installed Power Toys because I thought, okay, that there's a cool few cool things in there that I could use. Um, but Alt Space seems to be bringing up uh, something. So, and you know, I normally go use that to go to the system menu. Um, and uh-huh. I don't know how to change that shortcut or um, remove Power Toys because it doesn't want to remove. I click uninstall, nothing happens. Okay. Uh, Michael, do you know why Alt Space brings up Power Toys? I suspect I, it's a search thing. Yeah, it's probably a search. I yeah. have not used Power Toys, so I'm I, I am not sure. Yeah. Um <laughs> I and, and that's kind of the reasons why I don't use a lot of those tools because certain things kind of conflict as you use them and add, you know, the more you add to a system, the more things conflict and, and kind of mess around with each other. Um, you know, I, I tried uh, Launch Bar and it, it made my workflow completely different. And so that's kind of why I, I personally uninstalled that for myself on the Mac. But it's, again, what works best for you. And, and But that kind of can yeah. happen, right, is you install too many things and and just what you're used to having work doesn't work anymore. Yeah. And the frustrating part is I can't uninstall it because uh, in add remove programs, I go to it. Click uninstall and no pop up happens at all. Try looking <laughs> so, for try looking for the uninstaller in the in the installation. Oh yes, folder. I'll try that. I'll try yeah. that. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Good luck. <clears throat> all right, Jamaica. Hey, Jamaica. How you doing? Yes, I have. I have. My question is about um, the 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 newer computers. Do you think it would have the the new update to windows the h to windows 2023 update for that yeah if, compu- if your computer is capable of running windows 11 then you should be able to update well most my, of the time my, yes. my, my, mine i don't i don't believe mine is um or able to upgrade to windows 11 at this time so do you have windows um, 10 currently I, I have windows 10 yes Okay, so if it's not going to take the update, the regular update, so it would not take the new twenty three H two. Um, but but I'm talking about just buying a brand new computer. Oh do yes. Do mm-hmm. you think it would have that? For sure, for sure. Okay, thank you. It yep. may not be. It may not come built in, but you could definitely update to it. Okay. Just make sure that whatever computer you get is going to be running Windows 11. It should come with it if you buy a new computer. So when you're buying a new computer, just make sure it's coming with Windows 11 on it. Okay. Thank you so much. Yep. All right, Doc. Hey, Doc. How are you? Well, I'm doing okay. Um, I have uh, downloaded uh, 17 and updated to the point oh one on my iPhone. And I've run into a lot of problems with that double tap. And so I tried to 
you know, I heard you say last week that he ignored the first one. So I'd try a triple tap. And once in a while that worked. And at other times, the problem I would run into, even with a double tap, is if I was in a menu item and the item I wanted was at the top, it would then change the focus to wherever I tapped. Then I had to swipe to get back to the darn thing. And one thing that I have found, like in contacts, in those kinds of things, and even in opening apps and things, the split finger tap, for the most part, avoids the difficulty. Yep. If it doesn't respond, at least you don't lose the focus. And I was wondering if there, do you have any other hints or tips to try um boy there's a lot of problems with 17 for me so doc i do and someone followed up with us after they listened to the podcast yesterday or last week uh to give Uh us an idea because i hadn't experimented with it what i would recommend trying doing uh thanks to larry for reaching out with this suggestion is if you tell siri to open voiceover settings go to the very last option and it says double tap timeout and uh some users are finding that when they update to ios 17 their double tap timeout is getting reduced to things like 0.25 seconds or 0.30 seconds if you increase that uh, to something above 0.5 seconds, so above half of a second, then mm-hmm. this should solve the problem. Because what's happening is when you double tap on an element, when you touch for the first time, it's putting the voiceover focus there. Um, and then if you double tap and that timeout is too short, that second tap is coming down and it's moving your voiceover focus to wherever you had tapped on the screen the second time. So what I would yeah. do, Doc, is go into your settings. Uh, you can set it up. It looks like up to a second. Um, so go in there and increase that by a couple of tenths of a second and see if that makes a difference for you and gives you a better experience. Again, that's at the very bottom of your voiceover settings. Okay. Thank you. No worries. And thanks for bringing that up. You're right. Uh, as an interim alternative, split tap seems to be a lot more reliable for uh, actually activating elements and not moving the focus. So thank you for bringing that up, Doc. I appreciate it. Okay. Have a good one. You too. Who do we got next, Sheila? Okay. You've got 10 minutes. Okay. Roberta. Hey, Roberta. Hi. How are you? Um, I'm great. Thank you. Um, I am using uh, Windows 10, Microsoft outlook 2010 and i just opened up a folder and it appears that all of the emails in the folder are jumbled like by date so the dates are all not you know at first i thought oh maybe they're it got switched so they're instead of descending order they're ascending but they're not they're just ascending up they're just (laughs) they're just not ascending they're not in any kind of order any suggestions on where to look under the view menu um, in Outlook, it may be worth looking in there to see what your sort by is set to. I wonder if it got switched to some sort of alphabetical order, which then would change up the the way that the messages are okay. sorted. I'll give it a try. Thank you. No worries. All right. Bell Mills. Hey, hey Bell. We don't hear you. If you are talking, Bell, you are muted. She's muted. Mm-hmm. You're still muted, Bell. All right. We'll go to Alicia. Hey, Alicia. I don't necessarily have a question, but I did want to jump in about the mail thing. Um, I did find that iOS automatically turns off sounds for certain emails. So if you go into settings and then notifications and then mail, you should be able to click on individual emails. Like if you have multiple emails set up, you should be able to click on each individual email somewhere. And set up what type of alerts you get, whether you pop up, whether you get a pop up or a badge or Uh, a sound and everything like that. And it also gives you cool thing. It also gives you the option to set up different sounds for each email. So hope that helps. Thanks, Alicia. Really appreciate that. Okay, we've got two repeat and it's um, eight tail. Perfect. Beth, go ahead. Yeah, let's try Beth real quick. We don't hear you, Beth. Okay, yeah. Um, I was wondering with Facebook, um, uh, 
you know how it says GIF or GIF. I, I don't know how it's pronounced because sometimes the voiceover says mm-hmm. GIF, sometimes GIF, but some of the some of them don't say anything. Like when you want to put a GIF or send a GIF, they they don't always say stuff. So I'm wondering why, if maybe what how how can I find out what what they are like? You know, sometimes it just is so, GIF, get or GIF, GIF. So I don't use Facebook, but I would say it sounds like that is a labeling accessibility issue that Facebook uh, that you're encountering, that not all their GIFs are labeled. So it may be worth reaching out to Facebook accessibility to see if they have any uh, insight on that. Okay. The, the okay. other thing real quick, the other thing real quick, if, P, if you're finding GIFs and things from people, people may not be labeling them. Uh, if it is an image, like an animated image, uh, that, you know, it might be difficult. I mean, voiceover has the explore image feature, things like that, but, um, yeah, certain ones may not be labelable or describable, uh, unless they add alt text. So those are things to keep in mind. And, and can I just, if I want windows 11, just download it from a website. It should be available in your updates on your Windows mm-hmm. computer. So press, go to the start press menu. Windows and... key, type win- Windows update, enter, and then follow uh, the you, it, it, yep, follow the prompts there. It may ask you to do something and just follow the instructions. As oh, long okay. as your Thanks. computer is capable of being able to run Windows 11. Oh, yeah. So. All right. You've we have about one, one new minute. person. Yep, one let's take that person. last person, then we'll wrap it up. All right. 201, ending in 406. <laughs> Hi, it's Lisa G. Real quick, do you have the phone number for Facebook accessibility? Because I didn't know there was a number. And if you gave it, I think. Nope. Sorry. I don't. But there is a Facebook accessibility page on Facebook that you can search for and send a message to through there. Oh, it, oh so it's not a phone number. No. It's just to uh, do message. Okay. Thank nope. you so much. That's great information. Love you, what you guys do. Perfect. Great, thank Lisa. you very much. Uh, just one quick announcement before we wrap it up, and I'll hand it over to Marty. I do want to remind people, uh, if you get value or enjoyment out of the content, please don't hesitate to leave a review in the podcast app on your iPhone or Android device. And remember, iacast.net slash plus spelt out is an opportunity for you to go and show support for the content that you enjoy. Marty, you want to wrap it up for this week? Yep. Thanks, everyone, for being here. We had a lot of fun, as always. If you have any questions or comments or want to reach out, you can reach us at feedback at unmute.show. Everyone have a great week, and we'll see you next time. 